Simchas. It's the end of Macheshven. Uh, Macheshven means the Rechisha. Rechisha means when you hear a whisper. When you hear a whisper. You know, it was only like uh, four weeks since Sukkot. Person listens carefully though, he starts hearing the whisper that the Yom Narayim, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, it's still whispering to us, it's still calling us, saying, Don't forget me, don't leave me. And even though now everyone's feeling it, it's starting to get cooler, it's starting to get a little bit uh, the same Talmud, we've Rachadik on us. People now just want to take refuge in the base Nadrish. Certainly not in the covers of Netflix. They want to feel cozy. In those cozy moments, if you listen carefully, you can hear the Rechisha, you can hear the Nigulim of Yom Narayim, you can hear God whispering in your ears, reminding you. Reminding you. So, Baruch Hashem, we're holding the Yabra Kecha in Gimel, in Sadi Aleph, and we're learning about the Vekas. Basically, Pasha things just totally being bonded to God. You know? the basics of life, which really is, this is like as basic as it gets, and without this, you know, there's no conversation, there's no conversation. So everyone's serious, and like uh, Rabbi Yaman said on, uh, on what's the Shabbos, to quote, to quote Rabbi Weinberger, let's learn. Tayrvit Philip. The Zman Mufcha Lazaka is Liknois to Vekasu, the time, the best time, the most opportune time to cleave to God and to be totally bonded to God that you feel it. The Ace Hat Fila Valimud, the Kinyan Hamitzvah. The Kiyam Hamitzvah, excuse me. The Ikr Ikr time of bonding oneself to God is when you're learning, and davening, and doing the mitzvahs. And God set the world up with Torah and mitzvahs a real thing, because it's a real thing. And He wants us to have a relationship with Him. And when you hear that we're always talking about Torah and mitzvahs, Torah and mitzvahs, and davening, and Torah and mitzvahs, there's a reason we're doing that, because that's the ultimate way to bond to God. He set up the 613 mitzvahs, and davening, and Torah is the way to bond to God for eternity. And he doesn't want us to do this with a grumpy face. It's not like, oi, like a kvetch. Oi, oi. Everybody knows the famous mice of Moshe Feinstein. That when they asked, you know, why many of the Yidin sadly had a hard time when they came over to America from Europe. And they were uh, offered the ultimatum of, so either you come to work on Shabbos, or come Monday morning, you find yourself a new job. And sadly, there were many who were not able to do that. And they worked on Shabbos. And there were many who did not work on Shabbos. And they would find themselves a new job every single Monday morning. And then they would work for it the work week, and then they would quit again. And some of their children also <coughs> had a hard time staying, connected to So when they asked the Moshe, they said, what's Peshat? Why would it be such a thing? Their parents were Moshe and Nefesh. For Shabbos Kaddish. To find a new job every week, you know what that means? So what he said is that when they would come home after a week of work, and the father realized that he would have to get a new job on Monday morning, he'd crash and say, oi, it's very difficult to be a Jew. He didn't come back and say, Baruch Hashem, if this is what God wants for me, I'm not saying it's easy, but there was something that was inside the fabric of so many, which was shared. It's a hard life. It's a hard life. So I'm not sure if you're already noticing that everything the Rebbe here in Yam Dakeh is teaching us is the opposite of Shver Tzuzani Yud. That everything that he's teaching us is to live a life of Dveikas and Tarnitz with Simcha and Chiyas. 
and to get through challenges in our life with, with a labor dikkite and, and a confidence that Hashem is with us, even when it's not easy. And he's teaching us now that the ikr, ikr way that we're going to have that feeling of closeness in the times of Torah and Tefillah and Mitzvah. Let's see. The in yasa oisim etoich chipus kesher amiti in Hashem is born. Look at that caveat he says. The Rebbe says that if you're davening and you're learning and your mitzvahs is not from a place of God, I want to be close to you. It sounds like the Torah is not going to do everything that it could. And the mitzvahs are not going to do everything that they could. Not that I show up to Dalim because I just did that yesterday, and because, you know, I cannot Dalim like that one. <coughs> my you know, Shiloh profile, if they hear that, you know, oh, here, yeah, this guy checked out the Dalim. Oh, yeah, what are you going to say? I say, look, this guy, man, he's, man, he's, you know, he's far, he's gone. Oh, uh, yeah. O-T-B. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what we want to have. Mavish. I thought it was from that I'd never done before. There was never such a shachris before. You never dab in the Mayrif tonight. Ever. There was never even such a Mayrif that ever existed. Even from Adam Yitzchak There was never a Mayrif before with that energy, with the, with the opportunity that this Mayrif has. That's what the tzaddikim, they're always alive. Because they're saying, Hashem, you're available in this mirev that never existed before. You're available in this moment that never existed before. Look at down at the bottom. A helping way to get into this level. When you get into that place, Yeshaka means to be shakur, just dissolve into that place. But oifen kazet, in the following way. Sheyachlit, that you decide. A big part of being a yid is making decisions. So many people have a hard time making decisions nowadays. There's a big one. People don't like to, to have flashics. I call it FOF, fear of flashics. It's a disease nowadays. Why? Because I don't know, I don't know. I might need to have a magnum ice cream bar within six hours. I don't know if I can make that commitment right now. Bro, it, they're having flashes. It's a bris, it's a, it's a sulis mitzvah. You know, eat, eat the bris meal. I know it's serving in the morning, but you should want to have a piece of chicken. Yeah. <laughs> I might need, you know, a, a coffee with milk. I, I can't make that kind of commitment. Okay, I said it. I said it. What is that? Make a commitment and say. So I can't, I don't, I never make a, a brain of flushes on water because I don't know if I'm ever done. No, decide to drink, stop, make a brain of flushes, and then make a new decision, something, but I don't know, I might need to keep sipping like you, who knows, who knows, who knows? I just want to hold myself down. Make a decision and stick by your decision. The, the, the same goes through it, FOB it's called, you're benching. <laughs> and if, I, if I wash, it's like it's a real commitment issue. It's a washing thing. It's a benching. It's a whole commitment issue. No. The funny thing is, you don't have to wash the bed. Two separate. Just exactly. Anyway, just decide, and that's it. So that says she yachlit. Make a decision when you sit down to learn today. The yargish and feel. He's telling you also you can choose to feel something. By the way, the Torah says that. Love. What do you mean? How do you love? Isn't it a feeling? Thought it just, it just spontaneously comes up? What's the truth? That you can decide. Your mind rules over your emotions. You can decide to feel something. You can arouse emotion and feeling from making good decisions. One of the best, the best ways to fall in love with somebody, really, is that you start thinking about all the amazing things about this person. You make a clear decision in your mind, this is the right person for me. This is the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. We share the same values. We're going to be here for each other. And then you choose. And you start seeing all the good things and focusing on the good, and all of a sudden, the feelings start naturally coming. 
So the Rebbe is saying, when you sit down, first make a choice, and then start feeling. There's nothing else going on in the world right now. When I'm learning Torah, when I'm sitting in a shir, all of the distractions, all notifications are turned off, which by the way, they probably should be turned off anyways, just for your mental well-being. There's nothing else in the world. Dissolve into that moment of learning. Morning Seder just dissolve into learning. You, you get to be created an hour of learning a day, make that one hour, nothing else exists. Dissolve. Shachris, dissolve into Shachris. There's nothing else. You're in Beis Amikdash. That's what it says. You're in Beis Amikdash. It can't be one of these things that it's like, Just turn around and look at everybody. On By the way, that is a halacha. It's not even so pushy. You're allowed to look at other people turning around. I, I really mean that. I'm a bit of a kanai when it comes to this. And then the other person down, it's like, oh, what? it's a little bit uncomfortable like, looking at me. But still, you're, you're allowed to? There's no, there's no problem with it? You're not supposed you're to not look. Supposed to. not supposed to look around. It's a very long, It's a task. You're not supposed to look back to see because it's very distracting, especially during Shemana Seder. No, not to, you can look back to see if the guy's behind you, but it's just like a quick little peek. It's not like Bashita, I turn around and I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, what's up, what's up, guys? What's up? Yeah, I just want to check in who just walked in. What is this, like the, like the ball game? Like you guys going to walk in with peanuts or something? No, you're davening. You're in the base of Mikdash. In the base of, you think Tzimayr, for one second, by the way, I heard that he's not doing well. It was the first time that Tzimayr missed davening. So I'm appealing to the whole of humanity right now. That he, that he, that he didn't miss davening, obviously. He died in his house. And I heard that he never didn't come to Shul once, ever. Who? Tzimayr Zilberberg. You should daven right now. And then some of the Gabbayim told me that you should tell the guys in Yeshiva to daven for him because right now we're by Malkama Mikdash. It's a very, very special place. But tefillah. So I'm appealing to all of humanity. It's Svi Meyer Ben Devor Leia. Tell Shah Holy Israel Shah Rufush saying, I'm not just right now, I'm in. He didn't turn around during davening. He, he, his, oh, by the way, the second davening is over, he like comes up to look at the whole arm, like his face is shining like the Kaina Yotz in the base Kaina Shakadosh, Iman Barak Kaina, to shine. Like, like, and you say good Shabbos to him, and he goes like this. this. And you feel literally electricity coursing through every single part of your body. You literally like, oh my goodness, I'm going to explode right now with just joy and excitement. But the whole dad is not looking at anybody. He's, he's in base Kodesh Kedoshim. So no wonder that a person by dad is like, yeah, okay, you know, I wasn't feeling it. But by, by learning, I didn't feel the debate. Because I didn't choose to just be there and dissolve into that moment. The Rav should have. The Rav said when it comes to Shiduchim that sometimes a person should should think about should think about certain things between that person and the and the Shiduch and the Zibug, and that will that will bring on more emotion. But should it should the emotion already be there? Should why? Or I have to definitely. You don't have to create something that's almost like if it's not if it's not there from the beginning. So the only um, the, the question is by shaduchim is a person doesn't have to feel it. Why should he intellectually work it through? The answer is because your intellect's very honest. The intellect's honest. The intellect's not going to get in the way of the heart, but the intellect is saying if I don't if you don't go through me, there's a big danger that. This might be a big product of a big emotional imagination. Mm -hmm. And because the heart is very big. The heart is very, 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 very big. And if I don't intellectually make sure that this is the right thing, and it's going the right way, and this has a continuation, that things are worked through, so the heart could just take me. But if once I realize it's the right thing, you can't marry somebody unless you manage to feel it. Yeah, you got to feel it. I think Shulam Nagir also helps with that. It does. That, that's the whole purpose of Shaman Nagiya, mm -hmm. why we don't have any physical contact before marriage. Because as soon as it's physical contact, you think the guy's thinking straight? 
his, his head turned into a bunch of cotton candy. He does this, he's not thinking about anything. The guy, he's gone. He's gone. He's not objective anymore. Like, like there's a carrot being dangled in front of him. He'll just, he's in Gaga land. So he has to stop himself and Shurs also. Let's just be objective here. Let's, let's learn who each other is. Once it's clear that this is the right one, okay, so then we're going to move forward in every way possible. Do you hear this? When a person is learning, there's nothing. Chutz meha mitzvah hazois, except this mitzvah. That Sadiq can live with this. When they're watching the Tilos Yadai, when I just watch it, Shimar just wash his hands, there's like nothing else in the world except when he's dominating a, a, a Sim Shalai, you know, with the altar up his nigga. There's nothing else. Besides the fact that that's just, you know, where else is that going on in humanity? There's nothing else happening in the world. That's why when you're around Sadiqim, you get this. You get, remember we mentioned that, the last half in our points of advice. Being around Sadiqim, because they're living this, you start gleaning from them. Okay, back up time. Every single word that we daven and learn, you can have infinite, intimate relation with Hashem. Until you're zayicha to feel, feel real connection. Like you mentioned, like you talked about in the area of Torah, that dveikas b'Torah kedusha specifically. That feeling of closeness to Hashem while you're learning Torah, he he had the vekas to Hashem is born. It's mamish connecting to Hashem because the Torah and Hashem is one. Yisrael kudshabriuch of Yairais is chad. It's chad mamish. You can see the Balatanya in the fifth parak of Tanya that the 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 enveloping and and the, the complete unification that happens when you learn Torah is ingesting. And then the Torah ingests him. And there's a double enveloping happening between us and the Torah. The Torah is compared, just quoting a little bit, and I really recommend people make a little note here to go see the time in Perakei. That when a person gets an idea, you ever got an idea like, you have an idea, and you, we talked this way, like, you grasped it. Like, you got it. So what happened? You took the idea and you like, you got it. You're holding on to it. If I tell you, and, and it could even be that you have it. You have it, you grasp the idea. If I tell you there's a halacha, when you wake up in the morning, you have to wash nego vaser. You have to wash the ruach ra off your hands. So you wash three times and four times according to the going to wash the water off, the, off your hands. Okay, you got that halacha, but you got it? But imagine now you learn it so deeply that you can't think of anything else. You're walking around like in the Tila Sedain world. I always tell the Maisa that when I was learning the mirror and we were learning Gemara Sukkah, so in the mirror, there's a feeling, and this is why I love being there, that the world dissolves and all there is is Torah, which is really the ends. It's just Torah. When Mashiach comes, we're going to see the world in that way. Just Torah. So we're learning Sukkah, and we're talking about you know, what can be used as a wall, and what can be schach, and everything, all the halachas. Is it more than 20 hours? I walk outside of Beis Yishaya, and I'm looking around the mirror, and I didn't see buildings anymore. I just saw Sukkah walls. And I, I no longer saw, like, people had, were like walking a dog or something. It was, it was like, could that be used as a wall? And I'm like, maybe it's a human wall. And I've seen, like, and the, the, the pastry store was just like, puzzle schach. And, and, and it just everything, it was nothing else. I was living in Torah land. And it had these, like, beams, like two by fours. Is, is that good schach? Is it a kli? In a makabatum? Everything became, a, I was living in a sukkah. Literally. Mamish. You can get to that place. To live. So what happens when that? So at first I knew the halachas, I grasped them. But what happens when you learn it so deeply that you lose yourself in it? The idea grabs you and envelops you. So you envelop the idea, and the idea itself double wraps around you. So nothing like this exists in physicality. I can hold this cup, but the cup can't hold me at the same time. But in Torah it can. When you grasp a piece of Torah, you can grab the Torah, you ingest it, but when you become captivated by that idea, and the idea is God, because it's Hashem's Torah. So Hashem, at the same time that Hashem came inside of you, He then wraps around you. 
So you're inside. That's why choose wisely when you really learn deeply, because it envelops you. You know what I'm saying? So if you learn up the Torah, then you grasp it, you ingest it, and then it ingests you, and you're swimming in Torah. So it's a much wiser thing than to be watching LeBron highlights, and then you grab LeBron, but you think about it so much, so he is, he enveloped you, he ate you. You're inside his armpit or something, some nasty old place, like, oh my goodness, I, I'm inside LeBron, this is crazy, disgusting. <laughs> I'd much rather be inside of God consciousness than whatever else they're, they're trying to sell you out there. We should be so much to develop in God consciousness only. Oh, <laughs>